Hi, folks. Today, we will be talking with Chris McWigan. Chris is the founder of Professional Courage, an amazing company that provides training and coaching on topics such as career management and professional empowerment. And this is really exciting. Chris has a brand new book out just released last week, The Requisite Courage. Congratulations, Chris, and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Ray. Great. Um, Chris, what I really want to talk about today is a topic that I'm hearing all over the social media. So it's related to employees and team members and, and, and engagement um, in particular. And that term is quiet quitting. Um, right. I'm very curious about this. So could you tell us something about this? What is this quiet quitting stuff? Sure. So it, you definitely are seeing a lot about it on social media. It's sort of the one of the many outcomes of our new normal that we're all facing post pandemic and post everyone working from home. Um, the term is sort of used to acknowledge when people aren't necessarily quitting their job, but they're kind of stopping doing anything above and beyond. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to do just my assigned duties. I'm not going to kind of feed into that hustle, hustle culture mentality. Uh, I'm going to come here, do what you pay me to do, and then I'm headed home. And so it's it's not quitting, but it's definitely no longer trying to be an overachiever at work. So so you're making yourself a lot less productive, essentially, or? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly, as with everything, there's sort of a spectrum. So you have folks who are just simply no longer, um, you know, kind of sacrificing themselves and their personal lives and, you know, after five o'clock for a company. And then you have people on the other side who are saying, look, you're going to write my paycheck if I just show up and answer the phone a few times. So that's all you're going to get from me. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah. And, you know, a lot of us as leaders and as managers and such, you know, we're, we're seeing this. Well, one question, first of all, I have is, you know, hasn't this been around? I mean, I, I know I've had people that have been, have worked that way for me before, you know, so what's the big uh, excitement about it right now? So I think that the difference is the quantity of people are doing that, right? I mean, our culture has always idolized the workaholic. Um, this idea that we don't want to let others down and therefore we are constantly on our phones and constantly responding and constantly taking time away from our family to be addressing work situations and making ourselves available after hours. That hustle, hustle culture has demanded so much out of professionals that want to either be high potential, considered high achievers, so on and so forth, that um, we're just now seeing those individuals kind of take a step back and say, you know, I could consider a different lifestyle change, or maybe it's time to balance some of these things and avoid some of those stressors and triggers. So yes, there's always been employees who are willing to only do the bare minimum. I think now we're seeing it um, really kind of start to permeate individuals that typically would have been considered high performers or high potentials. Okay. And, and I've sort of seen it, or I've read articles about um, where they talk about it being more prevalent because, you know, people can job hop much easier today. There's, you know, there's mm -hmm. just a shortage um, of, in the work. Yeah, I mean, we have much, excuse me, yeah, so much higher job security right now because they're, everybody's looking for resources, everyone's looking for talent. And so I think people feel a little bit more secure in where they're sitting and um, also feel like their job, you know, their worth is no longer defined by what they do at work. And so I think that people are finding their passions and their interests and ways to feel acknowledged and validated outside of the workplace. So they're not um, feeding that, that desire right there at work all the time. Oh, okay. So, so it's good for the individual. I mean, you're, you're expanding yourself, but it's also not a good thing, you know, to obviously to, to be viewed this way. So that's sort of a, a balance, I guess we have to keep in mind. Um, Again, I think everything across the spectrum, definitely. Do you think um, any of the COVID uh, issues, such as, you know, all the work from home we've done and stuff, do you think that's contributed to it in some way? I absolutely. I mean, not only did it provide people who were probably right on the edge, teetering on that edge anyway, the opportunity to understand the flexibility and freedom that came from working from home, but many of us, um, you know, going through such a, such a drastic, unexpected transition like the pandemic and facing, you know, the reality that life is short, we never know what to expect, there's so much uncertainty, people tended to get more in touch with their values and what they really thought was important in life. And for many people, that meant realizing that their job was not the end all be all. And so I think some of it, and again, this is on the spectrum where I would say it's actually should be encouraged that people are no longer willing to sacrifice everything for their job. Um, people are just kind of saying, you know, I'm going to start to, to expand and make sure that my life has more um, width necessarily instead of just depth at work. 
Okay, great. Now this, this is where I'm coming from. I'm thinking as a manager or as a team lead. Okay. I don't like to see this happening, you know, and if I, if I detect it's happening, what can I do? Can, or can this be prevented? You know, what, 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 what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So as I mentioned a minute ago, Ray, I think so much of this is being driven by people's value and them wanting to feel an alignment, them wanting to find validation um, based on a lot of things that they find important, not just their job title or not just those attaboys from a boss, attaboys, girls. And so I think as managers, as leaders, what's important is that we're helping people to sort of reignite in their work by making sure that we're helping them connect and draw alignment between what's important to them and the work that they're doing. So it doesn't mean that people are going to quiet quit and then eventually you just have to let them completely quit. Instead, it is how is it that we actively re-engage them? How do we find out what's important to them? What's meaningful to them about their work? Why they came to this type of role in the first place? How they associate and really align with the organization? And then make sure that those type of values are infused in the everyday projects and activities that they're involved in so that they're not only feeling acknowledged, but they're finding true value and, and fulfillment in the work that they're doing every day. So I think it's about sort of re-engaging and reigniting through that reconnection. Okay, that's great. So, so it's sort of like a, a red flag kind of indicator to a leader, you know, to say, hey, yes. time to take some action, right? And, it, and, it's, and it's put on us a little bit to actively engage and just pick up the pace on this stuff we should be doing anyway. Yes. And I mean, we've been seeing Gallup polls for years. Their surveys have shown that most employees are actively disengaged, right? Now what we're seeing is that particularly for those under the age of 35, those numbers are increasing very quickly. Again, we're looking at generations who are coming in the workforce who were not raised nor feel any requirement to be giving their life over to the corporate being, right? They're, they want to have lots of different things that they're involved in, and they have a lot more autonomy over how they get there, whether they you know, we're going to run their own business or, you know, AmeriCorps, wherever they're going to go, they know they have a lot of options. And so they're looking to their employer to help them feel that connection, to help them feel like this is the right culture, this is the right fit for them to want to be sacrificing, to want to be going above and beyond. So employees are thirsty for leaders to come forward and have those connections, have those value-based conversations with them. And you're going to see that kind of uptick go right back on the other side. That's great. That's great. I've taken some good notes here. Um, and, you know, one of the things I'm thinking is that um, I sort of I behave that way with my employees whenever they're new, when they're, when they're first coming in. There's a lot of attention on them, you know, and, and are you comfortable? Are you doing OK? Because you they hate to lose somebody as you're just training them and bringing them on board. But then there's the people that have been around a while and, you know, they're sort of forgotten sometimes. So so I, that's one of the notes I'm taking here is to pay attention across the board. <clears throat> And Ray, here's an idea for leaders to think about. So Shola Richards is um, an international keynote speaker, just an unbelievable individual. He recently participated in the Global Leadership Summit with Malcolm Gladwell. I mean, just a, an incredible speaker. And Shola talks about when was the last time you as an employee were your higher self, not higher as in elevated, your H-I-R-E. Are you the person that you said you were in your interview? And I think that quiet quitting is drawing the attention to, are you the manager you proposed to be into the interview or during those first few weeks of onboarding? Are you still giving that much attention and investing in your employees' comfort and happiness and awareness and alignment as you were when they first came on the team? So it's about leaders and the employees connecting to their higher self, as Shola would say. I love that. I love that higher self. Yes. And I could think back to that. Um, and now, especially, is the time to kick it in a little more. Well, that's yes, great. Yes, Absolutely. Well, well, thank you for um, all that great information, Chris. Um, I do have one question for you. And sure. um, I was reading your bio and it said things like you have a, a tremendous fear of heights. Is that true? I do. I absolutely do. Yes, okay. very afraid of heights. Well, I have a picture here I want to share that I found. You can maybe explain this. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that person on the bottom? Uh, that would be me jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Okay, so this Ray is uh, what you should know is that this is one of three times that I chose to do times? this for no good reason. Oh yes. my gosh, that is amazing! But you look so calm and happy. Are, was that was that for real? I mean, I think at that moment the adrenaline rushing through, and you sort of have already made the choice. You might as well just yeah. live in the moment for as long as you possibly can. I believe this that's was cool. the first of the three times that I jumped. First of three times. That's that's amazing for yeah. someone who's afraid of heights. So. <laughs> 
That, that is really good. I'm now, hoping here, there is not a fourth. I have no intention of doing it again. <laughs> been, been there, done that. Bucket list checked off, right? Um, okay, so here is my question. Okay. Sure. On, on that particular day, you're you're attached to this guy. And um, we, you know, it's just like his, your life is totally in his hands pretty much, right? I mean, you're depending on him to get your feet back on the ground. Did it ever, Absolutely. Did it ever occur to you that, he, he might be having a quiet quitting kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> um, thankfully, it did not occur to me when I was in the air. He appears, at least on the surface, to be happy in this photo. Um, and I think what's interesting, actually, about that question, Ray, is that oftentimes people that are in more extreme careers are in those extreme careers because they align so nicely with their values and what's really important to them. And so I would hope but in his case, um, on this day or any other day, he was not quiet quitting and was bringing at least, his, if not his full self to work, he was bringing more than enough to make sure that we safely landed. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And I could see it in his face. He loves what he's doing. So that probably helps Absolutely. a little bit. Well, that's great. Well, then <laughs> that's a great photo. Maybe we all need to gravitate towards more exciting jobs too, you know? <laughs> yeah. That might help the well, situation. I mean, it's everybody's, everybody has a different, some people are very driven by safety. So right, I think it just right. depends on. I think it's important, again, that we just kind of connect to what is meaningful to us, and then how do we make sure that our decisions are in alignment with that, and that our leaders are backing us for it as well. Okay. Well, Chris, thank you very much um, for providing okay. this great information. You know, it's great talking with you again. Um, and again, congratulations on your new book. So I'm sure, you know, thank we'll you be hearing so much. much more about that as well. Okay. And that was the... I certainly hope so. Yeah. And, and that was the requisite courage, correct? Is, an, is a title. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Talk to you later.